Greetings again from the panel chair. This segment of the panel differs from the others. Richard Rogers has asked us to present an example of his research rather than a headshot of him talking about it. So now we'll take you over to Amsterdam where Richard and his team have been working on a project he calls Social Research for the Web, the Digital Methods Initiative. I'm so pleased to have Richard's work as a part of this panel because I feel like all of his work is an argument for a future social science and it's an argument that he makes best by example. So let me turn it over to Richard and he'll take you back to Iran in 2009. Now, from the beginning of the Iran election crisis, Twitter has played a role. In fact, it was called the Twitter revolution. Now, what we're interested in here is whether we can capture that small percentage of uh, pass along valued tweets that 8.7% uh, in that particular study, and in fact turn Twitter into a storytelling machine, into a machine that can account for what is happening on the ground as well as what is happening at the same time in social media. So how can we repurpose Twitter into such a machine? Now at the beginning, around June the 10th, tweeters found that the Iran election hashtag, so hashtag Iran election, was of quite some value. You see here the results of a search for it and the tweets from the various contributors telling what is happening or having conversation or telling about demonstrations, reactions to demonstrations. So what we did is we captured all of these tweets with the Iran election hashtag between the 10th of June uh, 2009 and the 30th of June and we archived them, we created a collection. Now you see what the collection looks like and a series of means by which you can analyze them and you also see who is tweeting some of the images are, of the tweeters are, are, are missing which is uh, quite normal for internet archiving generally. Now the collection is quite large. We have approximately 650,000 tweets. You'll notice uh, also uh, in the data set that for the Iran election hashtag, uh, most of the tweets are in fact in English. So we have an English uh, speaking space here. Um, and you see also that there are quite a few number of unique users, something like 100,000. So in order to capture uh, the substance of uh, the Twitter space, we decided to filter it and take out the top retweets, those that have pass along value uh, per day. And we did something else, we organized them not in the reverse chronological order that Twitter uses, but we put them in chronological order, starting from the 10th of June all the way up until the 30th of June. You see here the top three uh, stories or tweets uh, per day, starting with the run-up to the elections, where there's a question of whether there'll be a Musavi effect, uh, the great expectations of change in Iran, to the actual election day on the 12th of June, to the question the next day of websites being down, SMS being down, Facebook being filtered, Musavi under house arrest. Uh, you see a message from uh, Musavi himself. You see the protests. You see accounts of police using pepper spray. You see the heat of the moment. You see, in some sense, the ground. What we subsequently did is we filtered out sub-narratives in an editorial process. One in particular on censorship starting with the notice, June the 12th, that SMS isn't working, then that Musavi's website and Facebook are, are down, and they're asking the question of whether Twitter would be Ness, and yes, uh, on the 13th of June, they've blocked Twitter with seven exclamation points, followed by oh my with another seven exclamation points. Uh, subsequently, you see the reaction in the space, 
and other tweeters making available proxies where you can circumvent the censorship. Uh, also calls for hacking of websites. And then around the 17th of June and the 18th of June, you see that the solidarity action amongst the tweeters for everyone to change their location to Tehran so that the authorities can't follow who's tweeting on the ground. More calls for hacking or bringing down websites. Then you see around the 30th of June the substory of violence. You hear about the ambulances, you hear about the clashes in the streets, you hear about the Bazij, the militia who is connected with the government. You see stories of government operatives. You also see at the same time instructions of how to install various means so that you as a tweeter can't be traced. Iran election RT tells the story of what is happening on the ground in Iran and in online media. Musavi holds the press conference. The voter turnout is 80%. SMS is down, Facebook is blocked. So is Musavi's website. And then finally, Twitter itself. You hear stories of Musavi being put under house arrest that he has declared that he is prepared for martyrdom. Nada is dead. There's a riot in the square. There's first aid information available. And then you hear that Bon Jovi sings Stand By Me and support in Farsi. It concludes with light a candle for the people of Iran.